Kia ora whanau, kia ora mana wahine, uh, kei te pēhe koe. I just thought I'd quickly jump on and do a video. I've been meaning to do this video for some time now. So while I've got a moment to myself and I'm in the car, I'm parked in a beautiful spot by the way. Um, yes, I thought I would do this video um, while I've got the opportunity. So I am quite concerned at the lack of critique coming from Māori uh, back home. I'm not back home at the minute. Um, coming from Māori, or rather not coming from Māori, uh, around gender identity ideology. So gender identity ideology, if you have been living under a rock, <laughs> is sweeping the developed world at the minute. So, and what I mean by that is that now we are seeing... You know, um, we're seeing young children coming out saying that they're transgender, they're the opposite sex, that they're gender fluid, that they're pangender. And that's because of the education that they're receiving at the minute. So um, children are now being instructed at school on gender identity. And they're being told that they could be born in the wrong body or rather that children, it's possible for children to be born in the wrong body, which is a load of rubbish. It's a load of two tie that is. No such thing. Um, and what concerns me is that Māori, well, especially on social, or even, it doesn't matter if you're on or offline, Māori are just simply going along with it. And I really don't understand why, to be honest with you. Um... So I know that um, in New Zealand um, there are currently some bills being discussed um, or rather they're being presented in Parliament. So uh, sex self-ID and conversion therapy bills, okay? So uh, now I highly recommend, by the way, that you read this legislation or this proposed legislation because for me, you know, number one, okay, the first thing, that strikes me as, as odd about both of these bills is that number one, sex self ID removes any requirement for anyone to to have to go through um, you know years of therapy. I have to take oh they're all out there on the water. Um, have to take medication uh, and undergo surgery. You know, sex self ID removes all those protections because that's actually what that all that's all about. Because you know, fun if you want to chop your dick off, like that's that's pretty hardcore. You know, <laughs> like we want to make sure that that's mentally what you really want to do, right? But of course, so now this um, sex self ID legislation removes any of that. Okay, so which in a way is good, you know, because. I don't think you should really, but I mean, anyway, yeah, if, if you're an adult, you do whatever you want with your body. That is your choice, right? So sex self ID legislation, um, as it's been presented, removes the requirement for medication, surgery, years of therapy, right? Yet the conversion therapy bill demands, and I mean that, demands, it says it, it, says it there in black and white, demands that children under the age of 18 who claim to be transgender or claim to be the opposite sex or claim to be whatever they claim to be under the age of 18 must hear me on that funny must be affirmed okay what that means is that you're not allowed to say to your boy no son you can't chop off your dick what you have to say to your boy is yes yes you can go on puberty blockers and medication, you know, synthetic hormones, uh, which don't belong, you know, estrogen does not belong in a male body, and testosterone, at the required strength I'm talking about, um, does not belong in a female body either. Uh, so anyway, so the conversion therapy bill actually imposes upon parents doctors, clinicians, therapists, that they must affirm these kids or they face jail time and or fines. Now, why the fuck are grown-ass adults, mostly men, 
walking around, you know, or why are they able to identify as the opposite sex without requiring any of that stuff, any medication, any surgery, no one, you know, is forcing them to affirm anything. Yet, tamariki, because of the conversion therapy bill, are forced, essentially, you know. The, the legislation it says it there. You know, I encourage you all to read the legislation if you want to check out what I'm saying. And i am not just read the New Zealand one, but I've read the one over here too. It's the same. And all throughout the New Zealand proposed bill for conversion therapy, it actually refers back to legislation over here in Australia. So I've read it all before. So when people say, oh, but, you know, these laws don't impact you, they don't affect you, that's a load of bullshit, okay? Because what these bills do is they put into question everyone's (laughs) biology. You know, this is why we're seeing demands from, you know, various groups that women need to be now referred to as, you know, womb havers, chest feeders, you know, vagina owners, all these really insulting terms, you know, and what concerns me is that there are Māori out there going, oh yes, that's part and parcel of our culture. Uh, No, it ain't. You know, if you're claiming that Māori tanga is the same as gender identity ideology, you need to understand what gender identity ideology is actually is, right? Because we are no longer talking about transsexual and transvestite as it was back in my day at least. You know, those terms are now considered hateful, you know, and you get called things like turf and transphobe, you know, those park our dog whistles, you know. Um so so yeah, I am really concerned that you know, Māori just assume that this is well, it's sorry, it appears that you know, many Māori are either, I guess they're either afraid to, actually I know a few are afraid to speak out because um, I've had a few, you know, young wahine, young mothers, you know, message me saying, thank you so much for speaking up because I'm really scared about all this stuff. You know, and they say that for a reason because I've already had to leave quite a few, you know, supposed, you know, indigenous women's groups because they're all telling us that we now need to, you know, refer to us in these degrading terms. You know, nowhere in Māori tanga, I've never heard any of our historians ever say that wahine were forced to call ourselves, you know, chest feeders and all that crap. You know, I really am pissed off, I've got to say. I'm sorry for spitting. (laughs) But, you know, I really am, I really am angry about all of this stuff because, you know, it seems that we're being sold without even being taken seriously, you know, and women all over the world are being shut down, they're being silenced, they're being deplatformed. Cancel culture is alive and well, I can tell you that from experience. You will be cancelled as a wahine if you even dare speak out about this shit, you know. Um, Which is really odd, you know, what kind of movement silences people from challenging, you know, like if you've got an ideology, surely you would be interested in anyone critiquing it, you know, or challenging it to see if it lives up, lives up to its stated purpose or to see if it's a load of shit, you know, (laughs) like for instance, over in Afghanistan, I'm pretty sure that the Taliban aren't worried about pronouns you know, they're not, they know exactly who the women are among the population. They know, you know, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, woman, if, if woman over there turned around and said, oh, I actually identify as, as a male or as a man, yeah, they won't believe that, you know. <laughs> like, so let's, let's scrutinise this, you know, let's, let's have a court at all because we really do need to, I implore you all to have a court at all about this. Um, you know, the other aspect to this, that's, which I find incredibly insulting, is that, and I'm not even part of that community, I'm not lesbian or bi, but, you know, it's incredibly homophobic. Because now when we are saying that biological sex is no longer perpetual, well, that puts same-sex relationships out the window, doesn't it? You know, and I invite 
Now, I've been speaking to other wahine from back home, obviously, on this, and uh, many of them are lesbians. And, you know, for men, you know, we've never had in our culture tāne pretending to be the opposite sex, claiming to be wahine, and then claiming to be lesbian and demanding that lesbians sleep with them. Like, that's what's going down here at the minute, Fano. That's what's happening. Real, like, for, you know, on the, on the real on that. Don't know why I said that. <laughs> real. Anyway, um, you know, and I expect, I expect more than anything from this video that people are going to, you know, call me all kinds of things. I'll probably get, you know, threats and all that type of stuff. Check out Turf as a slur. That's a park our dog whistle, that one, you know. What kind of movement needs to send death and rape threats to women? Like, that's a bit when especially their motto is, oh, be kind. You know, how kind is sending, a, you know, a rape threat or a death threat to women? You know, so... You know, I guess the, um, you know, just the attitude of these trans, transgender rights activists uh, is really disgusting, actually. Quite disgusting, you know. Wear whatever you want to wear. You know, men can wear, I don't care if you wear a dress, a frock, if you're a bloke, whatever. But that will never make you a woman, Never. I'm going through menopause at the minute, <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, um, and it's frustrating that, you know, medical science hasn't progressed far enough that they can even help women um, beyond just putting them on, you know, I don't want to, sorry, I don't want to diss any, you know, anyone that's going through menopause and, you know, what, how they, whatever they take or what they do to help them through it, you know, Um and yet here they are, experiment, pretty much experimenting on kids. Look up Bell v Tavistock, okay? So there was a landmark court case that was won last year, um, which confirmed that, um, you know, transitioning children, medically transitioning children is largely experimental, you know. And not only that, children are not old enough to know... Um, what is good for them? That's why we're parents, you know. That's the whole point of parenting is to protect your child child from harm or your children from harm, you know. Um, but conversion therapy laws will take and does take that away from parents, you know. So please, Fano, talk about this, you know, and challenge people who go around on fake book making egregious claims about our tipuna. You know, I was told a few weeks ago that um, apparently Kahumunu was gay or had many gay lovers. I, yeah. And look, nothing wrong with being gay. But number one, our ancestor is long dead and buried. Number two, feels a bit yucky talking about his sex life. Like, that's got nothing to do with anyone. Um... And number three, I no one can even verify that. You know, when I asked, when I asked the person who was making these claims, well, who are these men that he was supposed to have, you know, had all these sexual relations relationships with? Couldn't answer me. You know, um, so you know, let's have a long, hard look at, you know, what we're saying as you know. So I'm not trying to make out that we're, you know, a homogenous group where we believe in the same thing. But, you know, at least if, you know, don't, don't spread bullshit about our ancestors or, you know, if you don't know about anything, just say you don't know, you know. Um, and this has actually been done to almost every indigenous culture. You know, the way I see it, indigenous people are being used as a prop for this American-derived and funded movement. It's got nothing to do with the Māori. It's got nothing to do with indigenous people. You look at the men, the, the rich, wealthy <laughs> white men that sit at the top of this movement, you know, they're not indigenous. They couldn't give a crap about indigenous people, you know. And not only that, like indigenous women and black women and women of colour, 
You know, when we stand up and go, uh, hang on, wait a minute. You know, when we speak out about this, about our concerns about this movement, about the gender identity movement, we get shut down like you wouldn't believe. You know, so oh, I don't know, fun. I just, I'm just encouraging you to, you know, think more about this. Really critique it. You know, because already um, in other countries, and I know here in Australia, you know, violent men. Um, they may not have committed their crimes, you know, while they were trans or transgender. But violent men, not the men who are in jail for not paying their fines or, you know, for petty crime. It's the violent ones, you know, the rapists, the pedophiles, who are inside in jail identifying as wahine or identifying as woman. And so what happens? They get put into the woman's prison. Um, women aren't asked about it at all. They're not asked, you know, for their input. And not only that, then their crimes are then recorded as being committed by women. Now, <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, it's serious, but, you know, it's just, it's so mind-blowingly insane, you know, that we would even do this. And given that the majority, or rather, given that we have, you now there's a lot of Indigenous women inside, you know. In fact, they are overrepresented. So, you know, what are we enforcing upon our sisters who are inside? You know, and to boot, and everyone knows this who works in the industry, um, well, it is an industry, um, you know, men commit far more heinous crimes than women. You know, so we have... Um, I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying that women don't ever commit men. No, of course they do. But, you know, not to the same extent as men. That's just a fact. Look it up. Look at the statistics. You know, it is true. You know, so, so we need to, when we start, you know, claiming that, you know, Māori tanga, Māori culture is the same as gender identity and LGBTQI, WTF, whatever. What are we saying? You know. Okay, Fano. I've got to go. Kakite.